All right, so today we have some very interesting information to go over regarding the PlayStation 5 and backwards compatibility, but we're also going to be going over uh, the recent rumors and this idea that's been floating around that there's pretty much a lot of internal strife going on with PlayStation and Sony and between developers and things are just not going smoothly. And I want you guys to know first and foremost that both pieces of information that we're going to go over are coming from insiders. The first piece of information, we are going to infer something. The second piece of information, somebody is directly saying something. You guys will know what I mean when we uh, go over this. But I think that there is a lot of really interesting stuff here that you guys are certainly going to be interested in. So we're going to start with the PlayStation 5 and backwards compatibility and how apparently... Uh, based off of this article that Push Square has put out, says that it's not just about the future, it's also about the past, and it, they claim it's coming from an insider. So let's read a little bit about it. It says, We all thought we were gearing up for full PS4 backwards compatibility with the PS5 a few months ago, but after a vague statement from Sony suggested that it's possible not every current-gen game will work on Sony's next-gen system, we started to have some concerns. However... While it's in no way confirmation of backwards compatibility beyond PS4, one reliable industry insider has stated that the PS5 is all about embracing the past. On Waypoint Radio's latest podcast, Patrick Klepik said everything I've heard about the PS5, this is going back a full two years now, has been a huge emphasis on history and that it's going to be the sort of thing where it's not just about the future but also about the past. That means your ability to play lots of those games. If you'd like to hear the quote for yourself and the wider discussion surrounding it, skip to the 56 minute mark and they link it. I'll have this article linked below so you can go listen to it for yourself if you're interested. It says Klepik then goes on to link this statement to the numerous rumors of a Demon Souls remake, which is more than likely headed up by Bluepoint Games. The context also suggests that Sony does have plans to support the ability to play games from the past two decades on the PlayStation 5, but this is just speculation based on the quote. So, this is very interesting because I I've never heard of this individual, Patrick Klepik, but according to this. Uh, article that's written up he is a reliable insider apparently but it's very interesting because if this is true he is essentially saying that Sony is going to be putting a great emphasis on their history and Sony does have a very rich history with the PlayStation 4 the PlayStation 3 the PlayStation 2 and the PlayStation 1 and if there's something that fans have been talking about for a long time now pretty much ever since uh, Microsoft first announced that they were going to have backwards compatibility with Xbox 360 games on the Xbox One. PlayStation fans have always kind of been pushing towards Sony, like, you got to get on this. Like, you really, you can't let them have this leg up on you. You can't let them have this feature and then not do anything with it. And so we were really concerned for a while as to whether or not Sony was going to offer backwards compatibility of any sort with the PlayStation 5. We, we now know it's confirmed to have PS4 backwards compatibility. And as for that quote where it said, you know, that vague statement that Sony made, again, I don't think it was anything to be concerned by. I think they're just being honest and letting us know that in order to get every single game running, they basically have to manually test it out, make sure it works first. You know, and it's going to basically have to pass, I guess, some type of certification, similar to the way Microsoft had to do it. If you notice with Microsoft, with the 360 games and every other game, they couldn't just literally make it happen. But I don't know. I don't know the technical side of this stuff. Hopefully it won't be an issue. But what I'm really interested in is the idea that all of PlayStation's, you know, back catalog of PS3, PS2, and PS1 games... The idea that this may be a reality based off of what this individual is saying, saying that they're going to put a heavy emphasis on the history of PlayStation with the PS5, I think that would be absolutely huge for Sony, if I'm being honest. I mean, there's no doubt that Microsoft has done an absolutely amazing job when it comes to backwards compatibility. Um, and the reason why they've done this is because they knew it was one area where Sony was struggling and Sony wasn't pursuing it, so they took advantage of it. And now we see just, you know, how big of a deal it is for Microsoft you know, I'm not saying that people buy new consoles to play old games, but it is a very important feature to a lot of gamers. For me personally, it's one of these situations where it's not going to stop me from buying a new console if there's new games I want to play, but it would it is definitely a bit it would be a huge huge letdown if like PS4 games weren't backwards compatible with the PS5. You know what I mean? 
they will be, luckily, but the idea that PS3, PS2, and PS1 games potentially could be, that would be an absolutely huge win for Sony. It would be a great gesture towards fans saying, look, we listen to you, we know this is important to you, and we put the extra resources and the extra time into ensuring that this is something you're going to be able to look forward to with the PlayStation 5. It would be a huge selling point as well, if I'm being honest. Like, if they can be able to do this and market the PS5 as, like, just the ultimate PlayStation console where you can experience everything PlayStation has ever had to offer over, you know, the since pretty much 1994, 1995, whenever PlayStation was, you know, <laughs> first created, that would be huge and we know that microsoft ha has been doing this with the xbox one for a little while now they're going to continue to do this with project scarlet and it would just be crazy for me to think that sony will not attempt to uh take them on in this area it would be crazy to think to me that sony would just allow them to have this leg up on them and not do anything about it sony doesn't seem like the type of company to do that in this area we know how important playstation is to them so in my opinion it really would just make a lot of sense that if what this individual is saying is true this insider which i do believe it it does make a lot of sense it would be smart it it, it makes sense because this is something sony would want to do in their best interest for their playstation brand because playstation is pretty much everything for sony right now you know it's their it's their bread winning uh business pretty much so Hopefully this is true. I mean, I can't imagine the fan response. I can imagine, actually, the fan response. The day we see the PlayStation 5 officially unveiled and we find out that it has backwards compatibility with every single generation of PlayStation, I think fans would lose it because there's just such a rich history there and it would just be a huge achievement for Sony and, frankly, something that nobody actually saw coming. And it's also really nice to hear that another person over here basically confirming that yeah demon souls is being made it is being remade i think at this point like i've been saying it's kind of obvious which i'm excited for that and uh, i'm i'm really pumped for that as well but yeah it seems that sony's not going to be playing uh playing around when it comes to the ps5 I, again we don't know if this is true i don't want to get people too excited it might not be this individual might not know what he's talking about we do also have to understand that he is emphasizing that this was like over two years ago he heard this, which I think is a good thing. I mean, plans can change and they do change, obviously, dramatically in between that time period. But if you think about it, if Sony were to attempt this undertaking, it would have had to have started years ago because it would be it would not be an easy thing for them to do. And if they want to have it fully ready for the PS5 reveal, it would definitely take some time. So anyway, before this video gets too long, moving on from that. We're going to go over this article that talks about those PlayStation 5 rumors and the poor communication between Sony developers was basically complete BS, and it just wasn't true. It says that if you've been keeping a close eye on social media and various, various forums over the last couple of weeks, then you may have noticed some rumors popping up with regards to Sony supposedly being stubborn with developers. More specifically, these rumors said that Sony's communication with various studios has been poor, particularly when it comes to getting them involved with PlayStation 5 game development. Naturally, these kinds of rumors can build up a lot of momentum in a short space of time, and given Sony's relative silence over the last year or so, at least with regards to what the company has going on behind the scenes, we started seeing a lot of arrogant Sony comments bubbling to the surface, but it sounds like these potentially worrying rumors were unfounded. Alongside Sony's new PlayStation 5 information drop, the ever-reliable Kotaku news editor Jason Schreier uh, has wrote on his Twitter, I did ask a couple of people about some of the rumors last week that Sony was communicating poorly about the PS5, and I heard the exact opposite. One third-party developer said that the hardware was excellent and the tools were on time. So, there you go. I mean, if there's anybody who you can really take their word for in this industry who is known as a reliable insider, it is Jason Schreier, regardless of, you know, how you feel about him as like an individual and what he talks about and everything. I putting all that aside, he has proven that he has contacts and when he comes out here and gives that insider information, he's spot on pretty much every time. So I think that this is actually really nice and it's something that is worth taking at least a minute or two here 
to acknowledge because I, I remember when these rumors, it wasn't that long ago, it was just like a week ago, actually, when people were kind of really going off and saying like, oh, MBG and other, I guess, individuals who talk about this stuff on the internet, they were all telling me, impressing me, like, you need to talk about this bad news. You need to talk about Sean Layden leaving and, and the layoffs and the restructuring. And it's like, people don't seem to understand that, like, first of all, I'm not going to go out here and basically say, uh-oh, I think things are falling apart internally at Sony because they're not telling us what their plan is and what their restructuring is. They're not mapping it out for us because they don't need to. This Their business, this stuff happens all the time. And to me, the idea that Sony was having, like, struggles internally with the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation division, their most important division, to the point where developers are out here basically like, we're confused, like, we don't know what's happening, like, it just, it didn't, something about it just didn't sound right to me, and so, yeah, I mean, you know, you have Jason Schreier over here basically saying that he's talked to a few developers who are saying, like, no, things are fine, we have the dev kits in our office, the tools are great, things are fine, like, this is where people need to realize that Sony is not, you know, even the person who's running PlayStation's uh, division right now, Jim Ryan, he was quoted recently as saying that like his biggest concern is not getting complacent. You know what I mean? So it's just, I don't, I mean, yeah, it's a shame that Sean Layden just abruptly left Sony or was even kicked out of Sony for some reason because of a potential power struggle. Uh, but, you know, and it's a shame that people have to lose their jobs and get laid off. But that's just the nature of business. For those who aren't aware, the reason why Sony is doing this is because for a long time now, the way Sony has operated uh, globally is they had their different, you know, branches. They have the Sony Europe branch, Sony Asia, Sony America, and each branch would operate autonomously, basically, where that essentially means that they have their own set of bosses and their own way of doing things in each area. But now Sony wants to have basically one big, you know, hierarchy that uh, is expands globally. So, you know, pretty much what they were doing is saying, like, these individuals, like, the you know, whoever's job it is to be the boss of Sony Europe, we don't need them anymore because now we're just going to basically have one uh, singular streamlined uh, tier of executives, you know, where there's, there's going to be somebody at the very top and it trickles down and it's not going to be spread out globally. It's going to be just kind of one unified Sony, if, if that makes sense. I'm just trying to explain this because I have seen a lot of people basically saying that this is news that needs to be covered because it's a sign that things are going south and it's like it's it's not you guys need to relax stuff like this happens at microsoft literally all the time at nintendo well not at nintendo as much but it happens in companies all the time and it's not always bad news in fact a lot of times it's very normal in a transitional period like where we're seeing now going from the PS4 next year into the PlayStation 5, it's very normal for changes like this to take place and for, you know, things to be moved around and for executives to leave. And, you know, we just heard that Mike Yabar, you know, left Xbox and like, is, is anybody panicking over that? Like, no, it, it's normal. These things happen. Okay. I mean, sometimes can it be a bad omen and a bad sign? Yes. But in this case, it's not. And I thought I would just let everybody know that, look, Jason Schreier's out here letting us know it's not a big deal. You know, he's talked to people and things are going smoothly over there when it comes to the PS5 and developers. So that does it for the video, guys. Let me know your thoughts about this down in the comments below. What do you think about the PS5 potentially being backwards compatible with every single generation of PlayStation console? Would that be amazing to you? Uh, do you think that it's actually going to happen or do you think that this person just doesn't know what they're talking about? And how do you feel finally, you know, getting insider confirmation from Jason Schreier that things are going smoothly over there at Sony? Were you somebody who did believe that things were maybe not so good and everything was on fire? Or do you feel relief now knowing that things are good? I will be interested to see what you guys have to say. Leave the video a like if you did enjoy it or found it informative. It really helps it out. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload. And feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.